how about if we could use the Microsoft 365 Agent Toolkit to create a bridge between your API and Teams? What would that give us? Well, we could use a bot platform like GetCody or VoiceFlow. Any of these have their own API. And we could essentially set up a bot which would fundamentally use those bots to answer the user's question, but it would be wrapped in a Teams bot. So I'm going to show you exactly how to do this. Much thanks to Ayush, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly, who put a comment in my last video, um, which is building a rag bot in Microsoft Teams. There's a link in the description if you want to check that out. But this is exactly his question. It's, I've got an API somewhere else. I want to talk to it in Teams. How can I do it? Well, this is for you. And that's what we're going to jump into right now. In the other videos, we've set up just a standard bot where we can talk to, I think it's ChatGPT 3.5. And I followed it up with a second bot where we incorporated retrieval augmented generation using AI search. And you can think of this as roughly representing that. So we have the user. They are interfacing with Teams on their desktop. Teams is talking to our application, which is our bot, which is usually hosted in the Azure cloud. That's here. And then our application then talks to whichever models we have provisioned in Azure AI Foundry. Compare that to what we're going to do today. Because I set up a get Cody bot last week it has a very super simple API uh, and I already had it running. I'm going to be using get Cody as my bot platform. But as I say, this will work perfectly well for voice flow and bot press and any other bot platform that, that has an API. So you can see here that the user is going to send a message along here. OK, it's going to as they see it, it's going to end up in their Teams application, whether they're running that in a browser or in their desktop application. That will then send that message back to our Teams bot application, which instead of then handing it off to a model, is then actually just going to package up the user's, uh, user's prompt and send it off to the API. So in this case, the Get Cody API. I'm going to try and probably fail. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I was going to try and write Get Cody there. I'm going to have another go because. I go the extra mile. Get Cody. I promise it says that. I promise. Um, so this is this is the Get Cody API, and I give it certain information like obviously an API key, like an endpoint URL, and also um, kind of like a an, an identification for the conversation that I want to have with a particular bot. And it sends it off to the chat bot and responds um, accordingly. And then that response comes all the way back up here, all the way back to our user uh, who gets the response there. What I'm setting up here is really a Teams to API bridge. Just so that you can see what the actual bot looks like that I created that we're talking to, we're going to be talking to via Teams. This is my Cobra Kai bot. Um, when do you train? And what we'll see is that we'll get exactly the same response in Teams later when we access this via the API. This is what we're going to end up with. Obviously, just looks like we're chatting to Teams, right? Uh, when are the training times? You should be able to answer this accordingly. There we go. The training times are as follows. So next up, let's have a quick look at the code and we can see the changes that I made to the boilerplate code that you get out of Microsoft 365 Agents Toolkit. Naturally, this mandated some changes to the main bot.py file. And what's on the left here is what the Agents Toolkit will give you when you select uh, Agent with API as we did earlier. What's on the right is my modified code, 
which simply takes the user's prompt and passes it through to the external API. So as you might imagine, the modified code is considerably smaller than the boilerplate code. And that's because there's a lot of things in there that we just simply don't need. One notable example is the model object, because we're no longer talking to a model. That job has now been farmed out to our external API. So we can get rid of all of that. We can get rid of the prompts. And we also don't need the planner. Planner, if you're curious, um, is kind of an internal step that the bot will use to decide if tool calling is appropriate. And we'll see a bit more on that further down. This is the bot object. And naturally, because we're no longer using a model as part of the bot, we can remove these things from here. But then down here, this, so this is one of those tools that I mentioned further up that we no longer need to worry about. This is just boilerplate code to demonstrate that you could implement a tool in this case called create task that the user could then instigate from the uh, team's bot from the team's interface. And what I've done is I have replaced that entire thing with um, a function called forward to external API. And this is the thing which packages up the user's prompt and forwards that off to the API and awaits a response. Similarly, this is another tool, a delete task tool, which I didn't need, so I've got rid of that. But what I've replaced instead of it is this on message function. Um, it does need this decorator. So this tells the bot framework that this is something that runs whenever a user sends us a message. So whenever a user types something into the team's bot and hits enter, this is going to run. And we need to get in the middle of that process so that we can pick up their response and we can send it off to the external API, which we do here using this function up here. Finally, this does still appear in the boilerplate code. It's just it's further down, as you can probably tell from the uh, from the, the diff output. But this is the thing which will handle the feedback. So when you're in Teams, you get a little thumbs up or thumbs down next to the answer. If you click either of those, this is what runs and this is how we can sort of potentially save those metrics off to some kind of analytics dashboard. So that's it for this week. So we saw how we can create a Teams bot which acts as a bridge to another API. And that could be an API which hosts another bot, like we did in the demonstration, or it could be something not even involving AI at all. So this is really up to you. Um, but thanks so much for that suggestion. Um, that came in through the comments. Another one which, uh, which I think is a great one and I'm gonna try and do for next week, is the ability to have our bot chat with a file that we upload in the thread. Um, and I think that will be really useful. So I'm going to try and cover that next week. Please, if you found this content useful, please do like and subscribe. Uh, we really, really appreciate it. Keep your comments coming in. I love reading them. That's where I get a lot of my ideas. So please keep them coming and I can keep on bringing you great content like this. Till next time, folks, stay curious.